live from Atlanta, Georgia, it's theCUBE. Covering IFS World Conference 2018. Brought to you by IFS. Welcome back to theCUBE's live coverage of IFS World Conference here in Atlanta, Georgia. I'm Rebecca Knight, your host, along with my co-host Jeff Frick. It is late in the day here, the reception is about to start, the drinks are flowing, but we are still, we're still interviewing guests and we've got a great panel right now. Joining me is, joining us is Scott Helmer. He is the Senior Vice President at the Aviation and Business Defense Unit of, at IFS, and Henry Canaday, who is a contributing editor at Aviation Week. Thank you both uh, so much for joining us. Thanks for having us. I wonder if you could uh, walk our viewers a little bit through the idea, where does aviation and defense sit within the IFS business strategy? Uh, that's, uh, I'm happy to answer that. Uh, I think our, our new CEO of IFS, Darren Roos, has been very clear that there are three things that IFS will be best at. Number one, we will be best at mid-market ERP in those vertical markets that we care about. We will be number one in field service management, and we will be number one in a, uh, maintenance management solutions in aviation and defense. So aviation and defense is one of the pillars on which IFS's strategy is currently based, and uh, we have formed a global business unit inside of IFS uh, that is specifically responsible. It's a 300 person strong team that is responsible for distributing a comprehensive portfolio of A&D solutions uh, to the A&D &A &D market globally. What are some of the biggest challenges that you're setting out to solve for your customers? Uh, also a, a good question. We, uh, we address the full range of uh, maintenance uh, management solution capability across A&D. So whether you're an operator uh, in the commercial or defense sector, or whether you're an in-service support provider, we provide solutions that support all of your MRO capabilities, some of your performance-based logistics requirements, some of your supply chain requirements, basically leveraging the core processes that IFS is differentiated around, those being manufacturing, asset and service management, uh, supply chain and project management. And what's special about aviation and defense that's not mid-market ERP or service delivery, which, which captures a lot of industry verticals, but the fact that you right. guys got carved out as a separate vertical, uh, what are some of those unique challenges? Uh, what is chiefly unique about aviation and defense is the overall complexity in the marketplace. Um, you're talking about very, very complex, uh, capital-intensive mobile assets, where managing the maintenance obligations in order to maintain the availability of the aircraft uh, is under the scrutiny of compliance uh, and is required to be done efficiently without compromising safety. Not to mention the fact your assets are flying all over the world, so they might not necessarily <laughs> and, be able just to roll into the maintenance right. yard uh, at the yeah. end of a bad day. And they're large and expensive assets <laughs> they're for large sure. And expensive. So, Henry, you've been covering the aviation industry for, for more than 20 years yeah. now. I mean, what do you see as sort of the biggest trends, biggest uh, concerns that, that a company like IFS is, is, is trying to grapple with right now in terms of surfacing its clients. Well, the interesting thing about the airline industry is that it, technically in many areas it's an extremely advanced uh, and very fast moving industry. In, in selling tickets, the industry has been going through a continual IT revolution for the next 20 years. And things like you know, giving you notices about when, when your plane's arriving, stuff like that. Very fast moving, change it all the time. But this is stuff, it's just money. Uh, there's no safety involved. So they can kind of take chances that they get it 99% right, they make enough money, they can so solve the 1% errors. The problem with, main with maintenance is it's messy, it's complex, as, as Scott says. It's also safety critical. They can't screw it up one-tenth of 1% 1 of the time. So the big thing, they've been very, very cautious and very, very slow, and they look sluggish and stagnant uh, on the maintenance side. But fortunately now, especially the US airlines are making some good money. So there's actually an opportunity for companies like IFS to come in here and really kind of reform the maintenance uh, program. And, and we've covered uh, a lot of autonomous vehicle shows, right? Autonomous vehicles are coming and, and obviously a big element of autonomous vehicles will ultimately be safety. Um, and one of the things that comes up over and over again is if you look at you know, the number of accidents and fatalities that happen on our streets, compared to what happens in aviation, right? If you ever, if, if a week on the streets happened in a week in the aviation oh, yeah. industry, the planes would be shut down. Be no so, you know, the, the threshold that you guys have to achieve in terms of safety is, is second to none. I don't know if there's anything even close, especially times the volumes of people, and then, oh, by the way, 
you know, everyone globally is getting richer, so the amount of passenger flow, and I don't know if you can speak to that, Henry, in terms of the growth of, oh, yeah. you know, passenger miles, I imagine, is the, is the metric, is continues oh, yeah. to explode. You've had uh, eight, basically 18 straight years without a fatal crash by a major American oh, yeah, airline. Exactly. And that's <laughs> unheard of. <laughs> right. That's unheard of. We used to have one crash a year up to around 2000. Uh, this is the, the US industry. Every time somebody annoys me with customer service at an airline, I think, I think of this, they're doing the important stuff right, so right. I don't care. <laughs> Very well. Right. And then you think of just the efficiency, right? The one, at least here domestically, you always think of a Southwest, because they were the yeah. first ones yeah. to really have fast turns and <laughs> they race they race to the gate, they race back out of the gate right. in terms of really trying to, to, to get maximum efficiency out of those assets. So the pressure there uh, and then translating to the other airlines is pretty significant to make sure you're really getting a high ROI. That's absolutely right. Uh, that's uh, again one of the levels of complexity that, uh, that we were taught, that we were discussing. Certainly uh, uh, we're, airlines are being forced to finally introduce some change into their maintenance operations as the increasingly complex assets are part of the refleeting as those pa that passenger traffic continues to grow. And so it's about both achieving greater efficiency in maintenance operations, not only without compromising safety, but ensuring the availability of that asset because revenue dollars still matter greatly and those assets are your greatest revenue producing assets that an airline has. Can you describe your approach in terms of how you work together with your clients, the airlines, um, in, terms of, in terms of developing new, new products and new features? Well, one of the unique characteristics about aviation and defense is not only the size of the client, but the length and duration of the relationships. So uh, our, we have a long and rich history, both at IFS and through the acquired MXI technologies, of working with our partners in their programs over the very, very long term. And uh, as much as we have domain expertise, uh, and a sizable team of domain experts inside of our business, we, we, we are able to recognize our partners that are visionaries in the industry, and we have established multiple levers of collaboration to involve them in the shaping of solution capability to support their businesses going forward. Uh, we are just launching today two new planning applications that were not only uh, being launched with uh, American Airlines and Latam Airlines respectively, but were co-developed with subject matter experts at each. So they, uh, they are tremendously valuable inputs into shaping our vision of what solutions are going to best drive business value for our customers over a very long, uh, long relationship horizon. So what if you can unpack the MXI uh, acquisition, kind of what did that give you that you didn't have before and what's the total solution now? Certainly, Looks certainly. Like. Uh, I joined IFS through the uh, MXI acquisition. I was previously its chief operating officer. MXI was focused on best of breed MRO capability for both defense and service support providers, as well as commercial airlines. In combining with IFS that had a rich history in A&D, we now have the most comprehensive solution portfolio available on the market today. We are the only vendor that can provide best of breed capability integrated into an end-to-end -end enterprise landscape, and we've got the team of uh, subject matter experts or domain experts that are capable of delivering that value, not just the product, but the solution to the customers across all the segments of A&D. And you guys, just to be clear, your uh, defense is more than aviation. I just saw a truck, truck, uh, military truck over on the That's expo right. hall, so it's, it's assets beyond just airplanes when it comes to defense. Correct, we support on the defense side of things, we support multiple platforms, whether they are, uh, whether they are fighter jets, uh, whether they're cargo carriers, whether they're tanks, whether they're ships, we support for the operators, uh, the asset optimization, performance-based logis logistics, security, et cetera, and for the in-service support providers, we similarly support supply chain requirements, MRO requirements, et cetera. So, uh, Henry, as you look forward, you've been covering this space for a while. What are, some, what are some big new things coming down the road, just kind of in the aviation industry that we should be, be looking for? Because, you know, we haven't seen a lot of kind of big things from the outside looking in. I guess we had the next generation fighter planes and then we had obviously the A380 and the, and the, the yeah. 787 yeah. on yeah. the commercial side. What, what's kind of new and coming that you're excited about? Uh, well, it's, it's technology, technology changes slowly in commercial aviation because of the safety aspect. Uh, the big new things are the new aircraft, the 787 and the A350. They are really new generation aircraft, a lot more composites, uh, plastics if you will. They're using that instead of aluminum. Uh, and the other thing that's happening is additive manufacturing, this whole printing parts. 
that's, uh, that's real big. And I was just, and I've been telling everybody, the new Boeing 787 has two printed parts, one made by GE, $120 billion a year, and the other made by a company called Norse Titanium with 140 people coming out of Norway which is not exactly the center of innovation wow. in aerospace for the last With a printed part, so like a 3D printed part. Yeah, a printed part. And that, uh, that's, those are the two big, big changes in, in the aircraft. I mean, you, c customers aren't going to see it, but these planes are now made of largely of plastics and the metal parts are going to be more and more printed. Uh, much more efficient way, uh, lighter aircraft, less, less fuel use, more efficient. Uh, less, less environmental effects, et cetera. That's, that's a big deal, and more important than a huge airplane. Right, right. Well, I can imagine the, the opportunity, I mean, we hear about the, the impacts of 3D printing, you know, haven't really seen it yet, but kind of this vision where, you know, your ability to print parts on demand it's, will have significant impacts on supply chain and now, inventory yeah. and huge, huge impacts down the road. Yeah, and, it's, uh, and the airline industry is the most demanding. They've got to really go through massive uh, proofs of concept and proof of materials, and it's starting to happen. Henry, what would you say is, is the most important area that IFS should focus on? If they, if they can solve one problem in the airline industry, what, what, do, you, what do you think it should be? Uh, availability would be one. Uh, just aircraft availability, that's what the, the, the airlines, concerned about two things, dollar cost per flight hour to maintain, and what they call technical dispatch reliability. I want to get that plane launched 99.99% of the time. So get rid of the unpredicted maintenance problems. Uh, make every, you know, schedule everything, make it quick. I want to get the planes off on time. It's amazing that unscheduled maintenance, regardless of industry, is still continues yeah. to be such a bugaboo to, to productivity and profitability and just is, is one of these things that's just huge impact. I would completely agree with Henry. I think asset availability is the number one focus for uh, commercial operators. And uh, you know, our focus has certainly been around trying to uh, remove the impacts of unscheduled maintenance. One of the applications that we launched today allows you to react very, very quickly to unplanned or unscheduled maintenance events and to do some what if modeling so that you can implement the best plan for your fleet in order to maximize the availability of that asset and not just in terms of bolstering or producing a better plan. We're attempting to do that even with line planning where we're changing or we're adjusting the traditional planning parameters away from what must be done to what should be done in order to maximize the availability of that aircraft. And of course, as Henry said, everybody's focused on faster, tighter turnaround times. Right. And all of our software is designed to try and drive tighter turnaround times and greater efficiency. So how, what percentage is just scheduled versus predictive versus prescriptive? Maintenance. Uh, I think it varies by airline. The, the great majority of maintenance is scheduled. I mean, there's no doubt about that. They put these aircraft down for a week or a month. Uh, it's a massive amount of what. It's not the uh, it's not the amount of maintenance. It's when unscheduled maintenance happens. It really throws things off. It may be only one or two percent of the maintenance tasks are unscheduled, but that's what throws the aircraft off the schedule. That's what you know leaves passengers sitting in the departure lounges ticked off. Right, uh, right. Not getting there till the next day or the next week or whenever. So it's a very, very small percentage, these unscheduled maintenance events, but it's, it's, it's crucial to the airline's economics. Yeah. yeah. Exactly, crucial to, to, our, to our itineraries as well That's as to right. the economics, <laughs> exactly. Making sure that the airlines continue to do what they do best, which is get us from place A to place B. Precisely. Well, Scott, Henry, thank you so much. It's been a really fun conversation. I enjoyed being here, thank you. Thank you. Thanks, thank you. Henry. We will have more from theCUBE's live coverage of IFS World Conference just after this.